We begin today the ninth Pedic of Mesech Tabah Bebasra, Pedic Misha Meis, that will continue discussing halachas as it relates to uh, Yerusha, as we learned already in the previous Pedic, Yesh Neichlan. Zok Ta'eliga Mishne, Misha Meis, a person that passes away, v'iniach bonum u'bonis, and he, and he leaves sons and daughters. So now, the halacha, as we learned already in the previous Pedic, is that when you have sons and daughters, who's the one that inherits? Only the sons. But there is a condition in the Ksuba, we learned already in Amr al affair that when a person dies, his properties should be used to feed the daughters, even though they're not inheriting, but they, they get fed until they become a bagheres, which is at the age of 12 and a half, or until they get married. So now what happens when a person dies, and the sons and, then, and there's daughters, so the sons have to inherit the possessions, and the daughters have to be fed. How is this done? So it depends. Bizman, shan chosim merubim, if there is a lot of possessions, and the Gemara will explain what a lot means, and soon it's going to say if there's a little, the Gemara will describe exactly what's a lot or a little, but if there's a lot, then I say, Haponim Yershu. So the sons take control of everything. They inherit all the possessions and the properties. Now, Vahabonois Yizainu. And then the daughters have to come to the sons, and on a daily basis, they get uh, their Mizainis, they get what they have to be fed for from, this, uh, from these possessions. And the Rashbam here says that this includes also, there's what they have to get for food, for clothing, and also to, to marry to marry off. The expenses of their chasana come from this as well. But the point there is that the, the banim, this is mostly shayinim, learn the pshat and the mishnah is here, that the banim get the whole yerusha, they take co- total control. And then the banis come and take, as I said, on a daily basis from this yerusha. However, nechasim muatim, if there's a, a little, there's only a, a little possessions and, and properties here. So then it works the other way around. You, you take all these possessions and have bonus is I know. The bonus are the ones that get it, that uh, you have, a, you appoint a caretaker that should uh, put the money aside for the girls, that they should have it to uh, feed themselves from this. And the habonim and the boys do not get the Yerusha. And if, if there's not going to be enough to feed them as well, then Yishul al Psachim. And they're going to have to go around and knocking on doors and asking for tzedakah for themselves, to feed themselves. We don't want the girls to have to do that. That's the condition of the ksuba, that the girls shouldn't have to go around knocking on doors for themselves. So they, the money is put aside for them, and the, the boys are the ones that, if there's not enough for them, they're going to have to go and collect for themselves. Admai noimer, Admai says about this, no. Bishvil sha'ani zachar hifsadati. Because I'm a Zohar, I'm a boy, so therefore I lose out that the, the girls are the ones that they, they get fed and the boys don't get and they have to go and knock on doors. So, so therefore, what does uh, Admin hold? Admin, admin holds in such a case when the Nechassim are Muatim, so even if you, you're not giving the control to the Banim to get the whole Yerusha, but you put aside the money for the Banais and the Banim, they both of them, both of them equally should get uh, fed from this money. The Banim shouldn't get any less than the Banais. I see the words of Admain being right. And we pass him like Admain, as the Rashbam here brings, that he's right, that you don't give the, the Mzainis just for the girls, and now the boys have to go out knocking on doors. When it says in the Mishnah that when there's a lot of possessions, a lot of properties, so then the Bonim are the ones that are going to inherit this. So what's considered to be Merubin? If in the properties of the father, <clears throat> there's enough that both the boys and the girls will be able to be fed for 12 months. So as long as there's enough for 12 months, so then we say that the Chachamim say, leave the Yerusha in place. This whole concept that we would, uh, we would take away the Yerusha from the Bonim. And we would put it aside for the bonus to be fed from this. This is a big chiddush. The Chachamim are basically uprooting the Yerusha of the Teira. It says that it's only the boys at Yarshin. And they say that because there's a condition in the Ksuba that you have to give to the, for the girls, we're concerned if you're going to allow the Bonim to Yarshin when there's very little possessions, then the bonus are not going to get their fair share according to the condition of the Ksuba. So therefore, if there's Merubin, if there's enough in it for the bonus to, to uh, get fed, and here, according to this opinion, as long as there's enough for 12 months, so then we say that if you're going to give control to the Bonim to Yarsh in this, it's not uprooting the condition of the Ksobe to feed the daughters. Because you have at least for 12 months to go to be able to feed them, so therefore we allow the Bonim to take control over them, all, all the possessions. This is what Rav Yudah said in the name of Rav. Then Kamrisa came to Shmuel. Rav learned, sorry, Rav Yudah that is learned by Rav, but then later on he went to Shmuel, and he said in front of Shmuel what Rav said about this. So Omar Shmuel said, Zudivrei Rav Gamliel Barebi. 
what he was telling you, that it's enough that there should be 12 months for the girls. That was according to the opinion of Gamliel, the son of Rabbi. However, Chachamim say, they disagree and they say, no. There has to be enough in the properties and possessions of the father that both the boys and the girls could be fed from this until the age when the girls are supposed to be fed, which is at the age when they become 12 and a half, when they're a begettus. So only if there's enough that they, that, uh, that they can be fed all the way until the end, until when they're supposed to be fed, then I say that the Bonin can take control over this in the Yerusha, and they'll distribute, they'll give to the girls on a daily basis. But otherwise, you have to put it aside, you have to give it for the girls to eat from this. It manami, we learned in Abrai says, well, that Kiyosa Rav and Omer Rabbi Yechenen, Rabbi Yechenen also said, that when it says here that it has to be merubin, what's merubin? Koshi yizunu mehen, elu ve elu, there has to be enough here that the boys and the girls should be able to be fed from these properties, achi yivgeru, until the time period when the girls will become a begat is 12 and a half. So hey merubin, that's considered to be merubin, that there's enough. Paches bikan, if there's any less than this, then hare elu muatin. Then this is considered to be muatin, and we have to right away set aside all the uh, properties for the girls to be fed for this. Now the Gemara asks on this, now if so, vi leke, le'elu ve'elu, achi yivkeru. If there isn't enough in the properties of the father, that both the boys and the girls should be fed until the time when these girls are going to be 12 and a half. Shakli luhu, banis lakulu, we put it all aside for the girls, and this is what's called muatin, and everything is put aside just for the girls, and what did the Mishnah say? That the boys don't get anything, and they just have to go out and knock on doors and collect money for themselves. So the question of the Gemara is, why should you say such a thing? If there's enough here in these possessions for Eilu, Eilu and Ve'elu, for the boys and the girls to be able to eat from these properties until the girls are going to be 12 and a half years old. So there is much more than what the girls just need for themselves to, to, to feed themselves. There's extra. There's, there's, there's enough for the boys to take from this also. So why should we say that we, give it, we put it aside all for the girls and the boys are going to go knocking on doors for themselves? Why shouldn't the boys take as well? So therefore the Gemara clarifies, Elo Amarav, some take out the word uh, Elo, because what is it, not uh, retracting really, it's just explaining what, it, what this means. And then, so Rav said, Beitzien lehen mezoynis lebonais. In such a case, when there's enough for Elo, Elo for the boys and the girls until they become 12 years old, so we put aside for the, the mezoynis for the girls, we put aside what they need until they become 12 and a half years old. We put that aside for them, Achi Yivgeru, Vashar lebonim. But the rest that they do not need is not put aside for the girls. The, the rest is, is kept for the boys and they can go and uh, eat from it. Now, what, so why did the Mishnah say that the boys, Yishalu al that they're going to go uh, knocking on doors? That means that when this amount of possessions that they're being fed from will, will finish, when, when that will run out, then they're going to be stuck. Then they're going to have to go knock on doors. But it doesn't mean literally that we take it all and we put it aside for the girls and they immediately have to go knocking on doors. It means that we put aside for the girls what they deserve, what they need until they're going to be 12 and a half, and then the boys get whatever is left over for them, and then when that runs out, then you shall all up Is there a difference between being a boy being Yarshan and being Kent from Zainis? Yeah, because when they Yarshan, so then they divide the property equally between them. But over here, you're taking out a big percent of it for the girls. A big percent of it, they're not getting Baklal. There's a very small percent then that they, that they get just as Mazainis. For, to, to feed them. Right, so it's uh, very different than a regular kind of Yerusha. Okay, so now based on this, the Gemara comes back now to the Mishnah and the Gemara says as follows. A few, a few different Ibayas the Gemara is going to discuss here. So first the Gemara says, Pshita, the following case is actually not an Ibay. The following case is Pashit. Meruben, am I closing the door? Thank you. Meruben v'nismatu. What happens if it's a case where when the father passed away, there was enough money to have for the girls to be fed, and therefore you could allow the boys to take their Yerusha. They already took up that position to become Yershin. V'nismatu. And then later on, this amount was, was minimized, whether the price of food went up, or there was a damage to the properties, it got, uh, got ruined. So nismatu. It's not, the condition is now not the same anymore. So what do I say now? Do I take that away from the Yarshim? Do I take away from the boys what they already Yarshim before? Says the Gemara, no. Kvar Zacher ben Yarshim. The Yarshim already Yarshim this. And therefore, whatever it was Merubim before, and they already got control over the possessions, it remains now as well. So even though now there's less, 
Nismatu, nevertheless, the, the, whatever was Merubin before remains now as well. So the Rashbam over here says that that means that if when it was Merubin before, and there was a certain percent, let's say it was uh, 25% of, that pro- of those properties, the way they were in the beginning, that had to be given to the girls. Because even later when it's Nismayit, the girls are only going to get again 25% of what the properties are now. Even though now the value of the properties are less, or the price of food went up, and 25% of the way the conditions are now may not be enough. But nevertheless, that same evaluation of 25% of what it was before remains now as well. That's uh, how the Rashbam understands this. Other Rishayim disagree with this, because you're basically ending up giving the girls food that's not enough. Because if you're giving them 25% based on what it's now, it's not going to be enough for them. The Rosh or other Rishayim disagree with this. You, cannot, uh, you, know, you always have to give them enough. But the, the, the point is that the Merubin, the Yerusha, the control remains by the Bonim, that they already yash in the beginning, so they get their Yerusha. Okay, now the question though is, what if it's the opposite? Mu'atin, if when the father died, so the properties that were here were not enough for the, for, to, to feed the girls until the, the time that we said. And so at this point, the Yerushim did not get control. The sons did not get control over the um, properties. V'nisrabu, but then later on, it, uh, it, it became Nisrabu, it's, it's, now it's worth more. The price of food went down. Whatever it is, now the conditions change, and now there's enough that the boys are able to yash for themselves. So my, what do, I, what do I say now? Do I say that we changed this, and now we say, oh, so now they can take the Yerusha for themselves. So the Gemara explains. Do I say, Bereshus Yerushin Kaimi, that these properties, even though it was already put aside from the beginning, it was already put aside for the girls, right? but nevertheless, these possessions are still considered to be really in, in the in the rishus of the yersh, and they are the real inheritors here. Menatayda. So therefore, hilkach berishus yersh and shavuach. Now that it went up in quality or went up in value, so so therefore it's it's in, in their possession that it went up. So therefore, now we're going to give them control over this. Now it's mudobin. They're going to get control over these these uh, this yerusha here. Oidelme, or perhaps we can say no. Suluki misalki yersh mehocha. Once when the father passed away, it was muatin. It was not enough for the Yerushim to take control over this, and therefore it's, it was put aside for the girls to be able to feed themselves from it. That, we don't, that doesn't change anymore. It's out of the control already. And therefore, even though now it's back to a, a, a condition that they can take control over because it's Merubin, we don't change that anymore. Now, this, this Iboy over here is in the case where the Bezdins did, didn't, didn't yet uh, intervene and Mamish divided uh, for, for, for the girls, put it aside for the girls. It just means... Right when the father passed away, it was Muatim. Once, if once the Bezdin already designated it for the girls, then the Gemara would not have the Sibaya. Then it definitely is out of the uh, possession of the Yershin. That's the uh, Rishayim that Rashbam holds about this. So the Gemara brings a Raya for this. Toshima, the Omer Rabbi Yaisi. Rabbi Yaisi says about this concept. The uh, Omer, sorry, Rabbi Asi that is. Rabbi Asi, Omer Rabbi Yechinen says about this halacha that the girls have to get fed from the inheritance, from, that, uh, from the assets, of the father, that Yisayimim shekadmu umachru b'nechasim muatin, even though when there's nechasim muatin that should be set aside for the girls, but what's if the sons, the brothers, they came and they went and they sold, they didn't ask anybody questions, they went and they sold from the father's uh, properties, ashamachru machru, what's sold is already sold, because in essence they are the real Yershim and Atayre, Bidiyevet, once they went and sold, what they sold is sold and now the daughters cannot get fed from what was sold. Bechlal, the halacha of a daughter being fed from the possessions of the father, that t'nai of the ksube is only what's still in the possession of the father when he died. Whatever sold off, they don't get from a likeyach. So once the Yerushim went and did this and they sold it off, so the, the, the daughters don't get anything from that. So what do you see from this? Even though there is this condition of the Bezdin and we set it aside for the girls, it doesn't take it completely out of the control of the Yerushim. In, in essence, they're still considered to be the Yerushim. And therefore, with the evidence if they sold, it's sold. So, so to going back to the boy over here, regarding this case when it was Mu'otim, and then it was Nisrabu, it's not out of their control completely. Be'etzim, they are still the Yershim. So therefore, if now the value of these fields go up, if the matzah changes, and now it's Merubin, they will become the Yershim, they will have control over this, and the, the, um, the bonis will have to come and get fed from them. Now here the Gemara brings Iboyes about this kind of halacha here, this, this case of Mu'atin. So the Gemara, Yosef, Rab Yirmiya, Kamei de Rabavo, Rab Yirmiya was sitting in front of Rabavo, the Koboi, Minei, and he had the following Iboyes, a few different Iboyes here. The first Iboyes was Almonosai, the Almona, 
the widow also gets fed from the uh, possessions of her husband. That's also a tenai of the Ksubah. Now, the question is, over here, according to the Rashbam, the Gemara Shaila is regarding this kind of case where there's Nechasa Muatim, and in such a case, we said we set it aside for the girls, but the question is, do we also take into account what has to be set aside for the Almona? Ma'u Shetamayit Ben Nechasim. That shear that has to be put aside for her as well, it does that, will that also minimize the amount of the Nechasim to say that it has to be put aside? So meaning if you would not count the percent that you have to give for the Almana, there may have been enough, you can call it Merubim, that we could allow the Banim, the sons, to take control over this. But if you're going to take into account the amount that the Almana has to be fed here, so then uh, it's going to be too little, and therefore the Banim are not going to be able to Yashin. Do you take into account the share of the Almana? Do I say, keep the Islam is Zaini, just like the daughters have to be fed. She also is being fed. That's the, the condition of the Ksobis on Mamato. So, therefore, yes, this will minimize the amount, the Merubin, that uh, the, for the sons to be able to take control over this. So, 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 so the, since you have to feed her, it's going to be Mamayat. I do or I say, no, keep the Ilu Menasva Lesla, since the Almana. Her condition of the Ksuba to get from the Mizainis, from the possessions, is only until she gets remarried. If she gets married to someone else, then she doesn't get anything. So therefore, Hashtanami less love. So therefore, even now as well, her, her uh, ability or her schus to take to be fed is limited. So therefore, now she doesn't, she, her Mizainis that she gets does not minimize. We don't take that into account when we estimate the amount, whether it's Merubin or Muwatin. This is the Rashbam's chat in the Gemara. Most Rishayim will learn like this in the Gemara. Which means the basis of what the Gemara is saying here is that this whole entire concept that it said in the Mishnah, that the Muzayinists of the Banais minimize, if, if it's a little, if it's too little for them, so therefore we take away the Yerusha from the Banim and we set it aside for the Banais, that's only regarding the Muzayinists of the Banais, not regarding the, what the Almana has to be fed. Let's say there's no daughters at all. It's just sons. And an Almana, an Almana that has to be fed. Are we going to say the same concept that it said in the Mishnah, that if the Almana is here, so then we have to set aside for her if there's not enough? So according to the Rashbam and Mosri Shainim, this entire Allah of the Mishnah does not apply by an Almana. By an Almana, we don't uh, set aside for her. There's different reasons that are given for this. One of the reasons is because regarding an Almana, she gets uh, uh, unlimited to a certain extent, M- meaning if she's never going to get remarried, and she gets until she dies. So therefore, for her, you can't start saying if it's, it's, if it's a muatin that we have to set aside for her, because then you have to set aside forever for her. And we don't know, I mean, it, it, there's, no, there's no limitation for this. By the bonnois, so it said before in the Gemara, one opinion until 12 months, or even the opinion that says you go until they become a begettist. There's a limitation to this, until they're 12 and a half years old. So over there, Chachamim say that you take away from the boys to, to feed the girls. So regarding the, an almana herself, when there's boys, that she doesn't take away from the from the Yerusha of the boys. But the Shail of the Gemara is, in a case when there is Bonais, and over here regarding the Bonais, we do take away from the Yerusha of the boys, if there's not enough to feed them until, until they're 12 and a half. The question is, if there's also an Almana, whether we will include what we're putting aside for her, together with the Bonais, to consider that to be part of this uh, Mizaynis that will minimize that amount, to consider it to be Mu'atim, to take away the Yerusha from the Bonim or not. That's uh, the way uh, Moshe Hashanah, the Rashbam here learns this Gemara. And the Gemara goes on to say, Im If you're going to accept this tzad of this uh, Ibai here and say, Ki even the Illuminas for less law, since if she would go and get married. So at that point, she doesn't get fed anymore. So therefore, there's a certain limitation in her schus that she has. And that's enough of reason to say that we don't include her together with the girls. So, hashtanami less law, so therefore even now when she's getting fed, we don't, we don't consider her part to be together with the girls to minimize from the amount that the boys would get. So the question is, in another case, bas ishtoy, ma'o What's in a case where a person has a daughter from his wife? In other words, this is a daughter that's not, uh, it's from a different wife. It's not from a, 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 um, a daughter from, from this marriage. It's not his daughter. It's his wife's daughter. It's his stepdaughter. And when this person got married to this woman, he took upon himself that he's going to feed his daughter, that his daughter is going to get fed from his properties after he dies. So that was a personal condition he made with this wife regarding his stepdaughter. Now, in such a case, she gets fed even after she gets married. This is usually by a daughter that gets fed from a person that Naive is until they become a begettis or until they get married. But this daughter that he took upon himself that she should be fed, that's, she gets fed always, mm. even after that. So she has even actually an advantage here. 
So now the Shaila is, this condition that he made, that this stepdaughter is going to be fed, so do we, do we take that into account as well? To say that the property has now become mu'atin, that it's too little to take away from the boys. do we say, This stepdaughter, even after she gets married, she still gets fed from, the, from her stepfather's properties. That was the condition he made with his wife. And therefore, we take that into account, and this will minimize the amount that's, uh, that, uh, that we take away from the boys here. Or no, even the Ilum Mesa. If she dies, Lesla, so once she dies, so obviously she doesn't get any more. So, so therefore, this is something which has a certain limitation to it, and therefore, we don't include this. It's not, it's not part of, it's not enough of a reason to minimize and take away from the Yerushim and Atayre from the boys. Furthermore, the Gemara goes on to say, another boy he asked, "Vim tim Sulaimar, if you're going to say, Kivin the Ilu Mesa Lesla, since this stepdaughter that he made a condition to give her, if she dies, she would not get anything. So therefore, Veloy Mamata, she's not going to be Mamait. We don't take that condition that he made to give her into account to take away from the boys. How about Balchayf? If there's money that's owed, Mao she Yemayit bin Achosim. Besides the daughters that are here that have to be fed, there's also Balchayf that you have to pay money to. Do you, do you take into account that amount of money as well to now minimize from the percent of Yerusha that there is there to take away the Yerusha from the boys? Me, I mean, do I say, even if the, uh, they die, the Baal Chayv dies, Nami Yisle. He also collects. The, the, the Chayv uh, never goes away. The Chayv doesn't make a difference. You always have to pay up that Chayv. So therefore, memayit. So therefore, this chayv is something which is a very solid obligation to pay. So you have to take this into account when you have to put aside the money for the girls. You also take into account this chayv to be memayit the yerusha from the boys. Or do I say even the mechasri guvaina? Since the money, the loan that's owed, it has not been collected yet. Somebody may come and collect that money yet, but the money has not. He hasn't come yet to collect the money. Loy memayit. So at this point, we look at the actual possessions and properties that are here now. And that's how we, we, we evaluate whether there's enough for the boys to yarshin, and we don't take into account this loan. That was the three boys that Rabbi, um, uh, who is it? Rabbi Yirmiya asked for Rabbi Vo, and he asked it in this kind of seder. Now the Gemara says, Some said that he asked these three boys, but he asked it in the opposite order. He started off asking the Balchayv. Balchayv, Maoshi, Ma'at ben Achosim. If there's money owed to someone, will that minimize the amount of the possessions to take away from the boys their Yerusha? Now, he started with the Balchayv. In the case of the Balchayv, there's actually the biggest Svara to take it away because you always have to pay this Chayv. And then he went on to say that if you're going to say that over there, the Balchayv is Mamayit, how about Bas Ishtay Maoshi to Ma'at? Could I apply that and say by a stepdaughter, when a person took upon himself, would that be Mamayit? Over here, there's less of a swara that it should be Mamayit, as we explained before, because she only is fed in, as long as she's alive. And then, Masha Tamayit bin Achosim. And then further on, Al Manasay Masha Tamayit bin Achosim, the fact that his widow has to be fed, will she be Mamayit bin Achosim that would take to take away from the boys? And the reason is because by the, by the Almana, as I mentioned before, she only is fed until she gets remarried. Once she gets remarried, she's not fed anymore. So therefore, we don't maybe we don't take this into account. Okay, that's uh, those are the three shilas. Now there's a fourth shaila here that Rabbi Yirmiya asked from Rabbi Vo. Al manasai ubas. When a person passes away, so now there's the mizaynis that has to be given for the almana and also for the daughter or for the daughters. Ezeman kadma kaidemis. Who comes first to be fed from the properties of the father, the husband? Amalei, so after all, he asked all these Ibayas, Rabbi Vod tells Rabbi Yermi, you can leave now, and Vesalomacha, come back tomorrow. And I'll, uh, I'll, I'll try to answer you tomorrow. Kiyosa, when he came back tomorrow, Amalei, so he said to him, Pshait, mi is chada. You can resolve at least one of the Ibayas that you asked. And he resolved from him, he answered him the last Ibayas that he asked. Omer Rabbi, Omer Rabbi, Rabbi Abba said in the name of Rabbi, that Osu Almane, Eitzel Halbas, Chachamim considered, the almana, when there are also daughters, so she has a kayach in the case when there's daughters, kebas eitzelachim, like the kayach that the daughter has when there are sons, when there are her brothers. Benachasimuatim, just like in a case when there are nachasimuatim, there's not enough for them to be fed until they're going to be a begetter. So, what do we do? We take away the yerusha from the banim and we give it to the daughters. We set it aside for the daughters. So, the daughters are, are stronger than the, the banim. 
So here the Gemara spells it out. Ma bas etzel achen, just like when there's a daughter and her, there, are, there are sons as well, there are her brothers. Habas nizaynis, we take away the Yerusha from the sons and the daughter gets fed. And vahachin, yishul al psachin, and eventually if the sons don't have enough, they're going to have to go knock on doors to collect for themselves. Afa mana etzel abas, so to the widow. When there are daughters as well, who comes first? Almana nizaynis, it's the almana that gets fed first. Vahabas, if there's not enough, then the almana gets first. Vahabas, tishal al And then the daughter is going to have to go collecting money for herself. That's the one Ibaya that he resolved and these Ibayas that Rabbi Yirmi asked. Going back to the Mishnah, it said, Ad zachar Because I'm a male, I'm a boy, so therefore in such a case where there's not enough for the Yerusha, we take everything, we put it aside for the girls, and the sons remain stuck and they're going to have to go collecting for themselves. So what does Ad Mein hold? In such a case... We're going to set aside the money for Mizaynis for the boys and for the girls equally. We're not going to allow the boys to yash it for themselves and take full control, but we're also not going to say that we put it all aside for the girls. We'll allow the boys and the girls to be fed equally. So the Gemara says, My Komar, what was Admin saying? What was his source to say? that Why, why was he having this taina that the boys should not be any less than the girls? Who says? Amar Abay Achikomas Abay says, This is what he was saying. Bishvil Shani Zachar, because I'm a Zachar. Veroy Ani Lasik Betayre. And I am therefore able to learn Teireh. Now Zohar has the mitzvah to sit and learn Teireh. So if Sadati, I should lose out. If the girls have to go collecting for themselves, so maybe disgraceful for the girls to have to go collecting money. But on the other hand, they're not being mavatal Teireh. They're not, they don't have the mitzvah to learn Teireh. But a boy that it may be less disgraceful for him to have to go and collect money for himself, but he's losing from his time to learn Teireh. So therefore, in that sense, he should be no less than the girls. We should make sure that he gets fed just like the girls. That was the Svar Abai said. Amalei Rave, Rave says to this, Elamayata, but if this is the case, man da'asak b'tayre hu yaris, only a boy that's able to learn tayre, so he inherits. The lo yasak b'tayre, someone that does not learn tayre, lo yaris, he does not inherit. It can't be that Admin was saying this because of the learning of the tayre, because that only applies to those that are able to learn. But what's with, if it's someone that's not able to learn, he said, because I'm a zakhar, any zakhar, even whether he can learn or not, why should he be any less of the girls? So what was the basis of Admin's tayne? So therefore, Rav says, the basis of his argument was simple. This is what he was saying. Just because I'm a male. And I'm really the one that's deserving. I'm the one that's supposed to yarshin when it comes to uh, uh, properties when there's enough. Meaning that even when, when there's a lot, so that he's really the real Yerish Menachayre. So, if there's less, and there's not enough for me to yarshim, but I should lose completely control there. We should give everything away to the girls, and I'm going to have to go uh, knocking on doors. Now, in such a case, so even though I don't have the Yerusha, the control over the Yerusha the way it is, when I tell you, but at least it should be split between us equally. That's the basis of the Taina of Admin. And as I mentioned before, the Ashbam says in the Mishnah, we paskin like Admin.